This is the next part of Unit 3. So we're looking at uh, food production and we, the last topic was all about um, crops and protecting crops from various different diseases and um, things which can reduce yield. Um, this next section is on animal welfare. So if we think about animal welfare as also being part of um, our, our diet, uh, our animals being part of our diet, then we need to consider their welfare when we're when we're raising them. So for this, describe the cost benefits and ethics of providing different levels of animal welfare and livestock production, and then outline the behaviours which indicate poor animal welfare. So we'll talk generally about you know animals in zoos and so on, but um, I guess for in terms of the course, we're we're relating it to to food. And I should say as well, there's uh, not much in this. This is a short. This is a short topic. So intensive farming looks like this, and it is defined as a system of large-scale industrialized and intensive agriculture that is focused on profit. So that's the kind of key bit there. It's focused on profit, with animals kept indoors and restricted in mobility. Then you have free range farming. So this is more like this. So I suppose this is closer to uh, the natural environment and it is defined as a method of farming husbandry where the animals for at least part of the day can roam freely outdoors rather than being confined in an enclosure for 24 hours a, 24 hours a day. So first task um, I want you to describe at least one advantage, just looking at those pictures and those descriptions, at least one advantage and one, one disadvantage of intensive and free range farming. So we're, we're going a bit, we're talking about um, beyond just the welfare of the animal here. So you want to consider the, the welfare of the animal, but also think about it in terms of um, farming and wider society, I suppose, economics. So press pause and do that. So for free range farming, advantages is you get a valuable product and you'll see it if you go to the supermarket or local shops that um, you'll have eggs, for example, that are marketed as free range and people that are maybe um, ethically aware or that, that that comes into their thinking when they buy things, that can, that can mean the product is more valuable. And also from the point of view of the animal, they're going to have a better quality of life than they would if it was intensive farming. Disadvantages, you're going to have to have more land um, if, if you're going to provide an area which is more like what they would um, experience naturally and also it's going to be a bit more labour intensive because you've got that you've got that larger um, area to deal with rather than all being packed into a small space. So intensive farming, the advantage is you've got high profits and the costs are going to be low. So as in comparison with free range, you know, you've got your one um, area where they are all kept and um, land is going to be cheaper to buy and so on. Disadvantages really come down to animal welfare. So the animal welfare is going to be poorer than for free range farming. Um, and related to that, you could say that it's less ethical. So if the, if the eggs were from caged hens, maybe we'll get to a point in the future where people will not buy them and they'll begin to go out of fashion because animal welfare is um, at the f more at the front of people's minds than maybe it has been in the past. So this website um, is something you could have a look at and we're going to use it for a wee task later on. So this is uh, Compassion and World Farming, ciwf.org.uk. Um, so this is founded in 1967 by a British farmer. So just to give you an idea that it was relatively recently that people began to really consider animal welfare. You know, if you go back uh, 50 years, maybe it wasn't really thought of. People just thought about the food on their the food on their plate. Um, so today we campaign peacefully to end all factory farming practices, and we believe that the biggest cause of cruelty on the planet deserves a focused, specialised approach. So we only work on farm animal welfare. So worth having a look at that website and also this video as well. So if you search for this, it's been made by um, that organisation. So do a search for what is animal welfare. So 
So you're concerned that the animal is um, the animal's welfare may not be what it should be. So what are the indicators that this might be the case? I don't know if you'll see this on the video because this is a GIF. Um, but one of the things that you'll see um, if the animal, if all is not well, then you'll get something called stereotypy and that or stereotypy. I'm not quite sure how you pronounce that, but that is repetitive behaviour. So it could be pacing back and forward. And um, what you've got here is the elephant is just moving its trunk back and forward repeatedly. Um, so that's one indicator of poor welfare. The second one here, this does not look great, and this is called misdirected behaviour. So misdirected behaviour is when you have normal behaviour, but it's used inappropriately. So you will have chickens, birds will pluck their feathers, but what you've got here is that normal behaviour has been taken to an excess. So um, over plucking would be an example of misdirected behaviour. The next one, this kind of encompasses two, so normal sexual behaviour or normal parental behaviour. So the first one could be um, an unwillingness to mate. So you've got the cow here and this is the bull. That's not, it's not a bull actually, it's got udders, but if there's a refusal to mate, then um, that would be an example of poor welfare. And the second one is, is parental behaviour, um, and that would be you know not allowing the young to suckle, um, which is obviously going to have a have an effect on their welfare too. And I think this is the last one. So if we had excessive sleeping there with a the lion and this is um, hyperaggression. So this is the kind of two ends of the spectrum here. So another indicator would be very low activity levels. So sleeping all the time, so apathy or if you get very high activities, activity levels, hysteria, so it's not a kind of uh, happy medium. The animal is is at the two ends of the spectrum and at one end or, or the other end of the spectrum in terms of activity. So this is a wee task worth doing, I think, just to help you um, kind of get this established in your head and, and maybe relate it to um, particular animals. So use that website up there and research the conditions of an allocated farm animal. So I've got this as a PowerPoint, but you could just write it if you want. And um, we would have been doing it as a presentation in class. So a bit of information, the number of the name of the animal under study, group members, uh, scrub that. So the number of animals farmed and the reason why from turkey, cow, etc. Um, a description, picture of the intensive farming of the animal and then an alternative. So just a little example of what we were talking about and then have a break. So as I said at the beginning of this, this there really is not, not a lot, awful lot to this wee um, topic and really this um, what, three paragraphs here, that's the whole thing pretty much. So put down numbers 1 to 12 and see if you can write the, down the answer. So this is from last time. So press pause. So intensive farming involves livestock being kept indoors in restricted spaces, whereas free range farming allows livestock to roam freely to its outdoors for at least part of each day. Free range requires more three is land and is more four is labour intensive. But the animals have a better quality of life and can be sold at a five higher price. Intensive farming often creates conditions of six as poor animal welfare, but may be more cost effective, generating higher seven as profit as costs are low. And then the last paragraph is those uh, four or five indicators of poor animal welfare. So they are number eight, this is stereotypy. So that's repetitive actions, e.g. pacing backwards and forwards. Misdirected behaviour, so that is inappropriate use of normal behaviour. So this is such as over plucking feathers. And you then have failure in sexual or parental behaviour. So refusing to mate or maybe not caring for their young in the way that they normally would. Um, altered activity levels, so very low would be apathy and very high would be hysteria.
And that is it for this topic. Um, this You may find this on YouTube. So this is Attenborough and the Giant Elephant. So this is worth looking at for um, what you would say is a, a period before animal welfare was considered. And this is the elephant, um, which is known as Jumbo. And you might find this in iPlayer or you might find it on YouTube. But it's worth watching, I think, just to give us an idea of how far um, we've still got, still got a bit to go, but how far we've come in terms of the way in which we treat animals.